Okay, so this is a um, kind of an appendix to the first Raspberry Pi video, which is how to set up your Pi and get it working. Now, if you're using a 360 original Xbox controller, you have it plugged in via USB, you're going to get this screen, no joysticks detected. Drivers for the 360 and original Xbox controllers do not come stock. To do what you're going to do here, I'm going to run on the assumption that one, you've ran the original Raspberry configs, and you've updated that and ran them, and as well, you've also ran and updated the RetroPie script. You're going to want to enter it, go to number three, setup, and then you're going to update the script. When the script is updated, run the following. So you're going to want to go into the RetroPie-setup directory, and then open up the RetroPie-setup script. Now, <laughs> why typing? Because my keyboard wasn't the best, I forgot to type it out. So, uh, the cool thing is, the last thing you typed out, you can just hit the up key and it'll put it back there. So I have to scroll over, fix it, and there you go. Don't mind any of this, I'm just doing this through demonstration purposes. You won't get that script. Now we're gonna go and set up, we're gonna go down to number 16. And number 16 is install drivers for Xbox 360 wired controller. Specifically, Xbox DRV. If you're an Ubuntu or. <coughs> x86 slash x64 Debian user or many other distros uh, out there and I think this even works for the uh, OS X operating system. Xbox DRV pretty much is the best thing going for 360 controllers. Everything is mapped out, everything is recognized, and it'll even identify the specific chipset so if you have a um, Mad Cats or something like that. Rule of thumb here though, try to stick with first party Microsoft wired USB, Microsoft wireless using the wired USB dongle that allows you to connect up four controllers to a computer, or the original Xboxes, either S-Type or Duke controllers. Now after this is done, we're going to exit this, and just to show that it is recognized and is plugged in, we're going to go into this uh, here and type in LSUSB. Now this lists all USB devices plugged in, including two entries in Microsoft Corp. Now those are both for the controller. Now we're going to reboot, sudo reboot, and what this is going to do is reboot the computer. Super do user do reboot. Now we're going to reboot this computer because of the fact that now we're going to want to get into the menu that comes up when you boot up. And when you do this, you will now be able to use your controller and set yourself up for the menu. Now, this is going to take a minute, of course, I don't really edit down with posterity too much, but um, as I said, don't treat this as part two, this is actually Appendix 1. Here's a virtual one splash screen, of course. Um, this is something that um, is a cheaper alternative for some people, if, uh, say, you've already got a wired 360 controller. Don't want to go through the trouble getting a um, SNES controller or something like that on eBay. This is a great alternative um, because it's over there and it's working. Uh, now the menu is going to load in here now. Any second, here it is. Now it detects the joystick. So go ahead. You got to hold down for player two if you're not going to have two player uh, two controllers plugged in. You just follow the guide up, down, left, right, except back menu. I usually use the start button. Jump to letter, page up and page down. And now everything is done. We can now hop in and show you the different things that are here. Now, let's jump out of this fast. Now let's go back into the setup script. The reason why is we've been able to now set up that controller for, of course, the menu. Although it is not set up globally, so we're going to scroll through again and we're going to go into the virtual setup script. Don't mind the script, as I said right here, I'm just doing some you know, proof of concept stuff. I'm going to go back into setup, number three here. Now, when you do, you're going to want to scroll down to register this controller. Also known as register controller. Go through RetroArch. Zero everything. Push in every button. Hit enter. And now follow B, Y, select start. Up on your D-pad, down, left and right. A button, X button, L button, R button. Then we're going to set up the L2 and R2. I don't have L2 and R2 in my original Xbox controller, so I use the black and white buttons. Everything else corresponds, so L3 and R3, I push in my analog stick, right analog stick, 
And there we go. Now, if you're wondering about why the analog sticks would be useful, well, there's actually a PlayStation emulator on this as well, amongst other things, which apparently runs PlayStation games fine. And I'll be showing how to do different setups for that. Now that we've done this, we have to go into the source-based installation. And we're going to deselect everything here, as we did before, and just have 12 selected. And we're going to hit enter, which will uh, compile a new RetroArch uh, config file, which will allow us to uh, have all the controls registered globally. Um, as I show this to you now, we're going to reboot again in a moment, just to save a bit of time. And as well, of course, it states that uh, we have to copy the ROMs now, we can play games. Uh, so we're going to reboot the system here again, um, just to speed things along. Um, as I'm showing you this, I'm actually copying the files after the menu comes up. It pretty much means that everything has, you know, set up, including Samba. Now, this is also going on the assumption you've gone in afterwards and you've set up Samba as well, and copied a ROM, or are in the process of copying a ROM to the Raspberry Pi. In this case, I did have Samba copied afterwards when I cut in with the reboot and hit start after you drag and drop your ROM into the folder and just go down and reload. What reload does is it reloads all the menus directory listings so that new games are drag and drop you don't have to exit the actual emulation station front end which is this menu here. So um, we're gonna just hit reload of course. Any minute now. I'm doing this in post so this isn't mine. But uh, when you hit the reload button, what it does is, like I said, it refreshes your listing of ROMs. This is also good to say if you need to update a ROM list and you've got a new ROM back put in. So, if you got a 360 controller, using the actual jewel button, I believe, works. But now we're going to scroll over past all of this, and we're going to pop in Super Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario All-Star, sorry, as I've used for proof concept in the last one. Now, the audio um, isn't very high, it's more meant for just to show that everything is in sync here, but uh, yeah, the controller is working fine as I'm recording this. I'm using the uh, original Xbox controller that I'm not going to use via the breakaway, as you can see right here. Now, there's a bit of a delay on the capture device there, but I have a live feed that comes out to the television here, so I don't experience any delay. Um, but yeah, works quite fine. Uh, another appendix I'm going to do is to show how to look at the uh, PS3 controller. But that's all for now, and uh, stay tuned for the next video.